So here are two MHS base custom sabers that I designed and built that integrate in my rotating crystal chamber unit. The first one you guys might recognize from my earlier videos, this is my Amon Katana slash Samurai Sword inspired saber. You can see this one uses a single windowed version of the, of the rotating crystal chamber unit. And then this big guy back here is the saber that I just finished recently. Uh, I call it Big Brass. And this uses a triple windowed version of the rotating crystal chamber unit. This is my rotating crystal unit. I redesigned this part to be its own MHS compliant kind of drop-in unit. And you have a couple options if you want to integrate this into a new MHS Saber you're building or maybe retrofit one of your old ones to give it something new. You can head over to my Etsy page and you can just buy this right here as its own pre-made unit. Or if you'd like and you'd like to save yourself a little bit of money, you can go ahead and build it yourself from a couple parts you can get from my Shapeway store and a couple parts that you'll get from the custom Saber shop and uh, Amazon and the, and the like. And this is, a, this is an MHS compliant unit and so you know, it will screw into any, you know, MHS part and uh, that little white ring that was sticking out will actually clamp on and so that will uh, lock this unit in so it won't go anywhere, uh, in or out. So with your completed unit, uh, either bought off of Etsy or you've built it yourself, and you want to integrate into your Saber, there's a couple things I've been playing around with this, just kind of seeing where it fits and how it works, and I'll give you kind of the tips that I've picked up on. Uh, by no means have I tested every single iteration of every single MHS part. Uh, internal and external, but I've, I've given it a pretty good go. If you want to fit an 18650 battery in the back here, along with all of your electronics, you're going to need a 4-inch tube, and that'll give you more than enough room to fit your battery in there, Inclu and your uh, whatever electronics you're doing. If you want to build all of your electronics in the front, you're going to need about a 5-inch, maybe a little bit more, and the maybe comes based upon how long your heat sink is. If you're using like a Tri-Rebel with, a, with the, uh, the smaller optic stack up, you'll be fine, you'll have clearance. But if you have the larger optic stack ups that come with the other LEDs, uh, your heat sink is gonna be sitting right up against the 18650 battery. So what you can do is either go to a six inch, a tube or you know try to find you know a couple of trim rings and maybe trim it up in the middle to extend it out. Or what you can do is simply just get the low profile heat sink or just dremel or sand off some of the, the existing heat sink just to give yourself some more wiggle room. Now, if you want to have one or the other, if you want to shrink down one of these, uh, the shortest you can make this tube and still fit the, the, the speaker mount in is going to be a two inch extension. And the shortest that you can make this section and still fit a full size heat sink in is three inches. And the difference between the two and the three is because there's an inch of, of motor that kind of, that juts out here, that kind of precludes you from uh, from doing anything. And then that also includes if you're gonna try to put a choke in, you need to make sure that the absolute deepest part of your choke is at least two inches away from this part because otherwise this edge of the motor is gonna ram into it. The motor is edge mounted so that way it gives you room if you wanna mount uh, a board uh, all the way down in here to give yourself more room to get to SD cards or have more room for wiring. Uh, that's an option you have. And uh, if you're building one of these and you don't and you're not using an MHS uh, part, you just want to kind of stick it into any you know tube that you feel like. Uh, you can just uh, simply dremel off this 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 external ring here, and then it would be one contiguous diameter, and then you could make adapters and fit it pretty much into any any particular tube you're looking for. If you're taking the option of building your own rotating crystal unit, you're going to need to get a few things. There's two things, two separate things you need to get from Shapeways, and then there's a couple other things you're going to need to get. There's two kits from Shapeways, and what they cover are the opaque frame pieces. This is the, the uh, chamber chassis, and that's going to be the main chassis in this little ring here. And then there's a separate thing you'll get, which is all the clear parts. You get the, the crystal, you get the, the double helix energy uh, recycler and intensifier, and then you get a little spur gear. Now the other things you're gonna need to have are a motor, 
I got this from Amazon. You can use a 6 volt version or a 3 volt version. Either one will work, even if you're using 3 volts, it just kind of dictates the speed and as long as you have enough, you know, current. I have links for this in the description. And the other thing you're going to need is one of the custom Saber Shop a coupler pieces and you can choose how you want to modify this when you get it it will look like this you can get the version that has these little slats in it and then what you need to do if you want to be able to see more of it is you basically just cut here with a dremel and connect those two lines up and what I've done on this one you can see is I've done three of them you can obviously do zero one two or all three uh, more than that and I would worry about the structural integrity of the particular saber and then the last thing you're going to need is a little chunk from a two liter soda bottle and that's going to be your window to protect everything. There's a lot of different motors that will work in this design. Uh, as I've mentioned before there's three volt versions and six volt versions. I'll have links to all the different ones I found on Amazon that will work but most likely the motor you get will have a, an output shaft that is too long and you're going to have to cut it, sand it, or dremel it down to be four millimeters in length as measured from this surface here to the very tip there. So to start off with the assembly, let's, let's start with this little chunk here. All I did is cut this out the side of a two liter bottle. And then what I did is I just cut it and kept trimming it over and over and over again until it just perfectly fit in here. So you can see I can slide it in there with it, with, with it folded over, get it lined up, and then I get it lined up with this inner part and you can hear it kind of clicks over and it's perfectly lined up. And what that does is by putting the line here and getting these perfectly lined up is now this is actually like a really strong window. And that, that protects you from you know getting anything caught inside of here. Moving on to the main assembly. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is taking your chassis pieces. There's one hole you gotta clear it on your chassis and you can use a really long paper clip hooked into a Dremel or a drill. And all you need to do is go right through here and clear out this this channel. This this pin is important. You're going to be putting that in there. And so it clears all the way through there. And you can see right here you know, where, where you need to aim your Dremel or your drill just to clear out that hole all the way through. When you have that cleared out, what you need to do is just take a, a little piece of paper clip, uh, put some super glue on it, stick that guy right in here slide it in and then again let the glue do its work and then I would clip it off so it's about two millimeters or so or what you can simply do is take your your helix slide it in there uh, line it up on top of your paper clip which is much easier to do when you can see and then like that and then see you'll see where you need to you know how you need to clip it shorter so it's not sticking through with the pin installed, uh, grab your, your motor, go ahead and test fit it in there, make sure it slides in nicely and you don't have a bunch of like powder that might jam up your gear system here. And then if everything's going good, what you, what you can do is just put a little dot of super glue or hot glue or, or what or your, again, your choice of adhesives here on your motor. And then just slide this guy in, uh, that way it won't, it won't back back out or you know anything like that. And then again, just, just let that dry and when that's dry you can go ahead and grab the spur gear and you'll see that there's a flat on the spur gear there's a flat on your motor and then these two just kind of press fit on top of one another and you don't have to worry about if it's if it's a little loose because once the uh, the helix is in there it actually gets clamped in there and it won't fall out went ahead and threw a little bit of just black acrylic paint all over these internal surfaces uh, just to black everything out uh, you can obviously use foil tapes or any other paints or rub and buffs to do all kinds of interesting finishes. Then the next thing you need is your crystal. Now the crystal is by default this kind of yellowish clear uh, amber kind of color. If you want other colored crystals like reds or greens or blues, you can actually dye uh, any of these clear parts just using normal you know, RIT fabric dye. You just mix it up in a tiny little amount that, that's pretty strong with warm water and just dunk it in there for like 15, 20 seconds uh, and pull it out and check to see the color, dump it back in and you know, increase your time or increase your concentration until you get the color you want. But take this piece and then get this ring. You can see I've added a bit of foil tape here as a light block. And then you can combine these two pieces together and you just use a little bit of super glue uh, just around the ridge here uh, on your, your crystal chamber. 
to uh, secure these two pieces together like so uh, on the crystal chamber itself uh, you can do a lot of different finishings paints uh, I recommend foils again for light blocking and I really like the idea of making these look like they're individual floating sections so what I do is I just cut little strips of foil tape and wrap them around uh, inside and out along each of these little pieces and so it gives the impression when the lights are on that these are these are clear and these are not so you end up getting that kind of floating appearance so what you do is you take these two pieces you marry them together like so and then this whole unit slides into here and you line it up uh, on this on your little axle and then you twist it until it lines up gear teeth wise and you can see everything's groovy and then you can simply pull this piece back out uh, you know, keep this guy uh, orientation specific, and then take your 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 adhesive of choice, my case super glue, and just kind of run another bead just around this edge here, and then bring these two pieces together, and then rotate the crystal to whatever face you want. You know, these are going to be your window, so pick whichever pretty, excuse me, whichever pretty face you want pointing forward and then again just let those guys uh, cure up and, and, and dry like so and then uh, at this point you can do a test to make sure uh, you don't have to do any catastrophic disassembly go ahead and you can wire up your motor with these very handy dandy uh, clips I'm using and I'm just gonna use a 2032 battery to just to run the test and you can see this guy's spinning nice and uh, you can decide uh, depending on how you wire it which way you want your crystal to spin I tend to like it actually to spin like this so it looks like it's pushing energy up but you can flip it the other way and give it the impression that it's pushing energy down it's all up to you and then the last thing you need to do is take your your coupler and the other thing I recommend is you actually paint uh, before you put your window in I, I usually paint all around this this edge here you can see black just to to lessen that depth feeling and then all you gotta do is put A into B and kinda work it cause you gotta get it past your uh, you know, the edges of your window a bit like so ah. and then um, what you wanna do is line these these three uh, cable channels you want to twist them, kind of moving them forward and backwards to line them up with one of your your not open sides and then just slide that in and then uh, you're gonna have to fight the, the window again when you hit this this this, uh, this thicker section but push that guy all the way up and fully seat it and there you go. So here's your completed unit. Uh, all you'd need to do to truly integrate it into your Sabre is glue in a 5mm LED and wire that up and then solder on and wire up your motors and run all your wires through the three cable guides that go around the edges and then all you need to do is just uh, wire everything up and integrate your electronics and you should have a fully working saber like so